Greetings and good wishes from me, Amit Damodar. So last time we, we discussed why should a owner give a mandate and why should a tenant give a mandate. Now we are going to discuss what are the contents of a mandate. The first part is what is the name of the owner and what are the details of the property? What is the size and what is the type of transaction? Is it a sale, a lease or a rent? Part two is what are the services being offered by the consultant? How is the consultant going to market the property? Is he going to do it online, offline? Is he going to place a board at the site? What are the services that the consultant is offering? He obviously has to show the property. Who is going to clean the property before it's shown? The consultant also needs to help in negotiation of the property. He needs to do a client profiling and he needs to give regular reports to the owner. Further, is this going to be an exclusive mandate? What is the period of this exclusive mandate? And what happens if the owner gets a direct enquiry or through other brokers? What's going to be the fee in that case and what's going to be the procedure and modality or to deal in that case? Next, what are the responsibilities of the owner? So the owner has to keep all documents ready. He has to give you the keys of the property or ensure that the property is shown at the time and at a request. The property has to be kept clean. Documents, taxes, approvals, everything have to be in place. The owner has to share all facts known to him fully disclosed to you. And you in turn will have to share all the same further to your tenant or to your buyer. Every mandate has to have a very clear timeline and a cooling off period. So while you work on a mandate, there could be clients that may approach 10 or 15 days later or maybe 30 days later after the mandate. These could be clients that you have worked with. So you have to accommodate for the same. Very, very importantly, the property consultant or the broker has to be present at every meeting and the mandate should also state the same. Any meeting between the tenant and the landlord or the buyer and seller should be well documented by the realtor and it is very important or ideal that if the realtor represents either the buyer or the seller, there should not be a conflict of interest in a transaction ideally. Thank you for joining us today. This is Amit Damodar Chug MRICS on LinkedIn. See you soon. Connect with you at my next video. Bye-bye.